Uh, first of all, I want to thank the media for uh, following us and following the league through what uh, obviously is a, uh, an historic summer and, and probably the most uh, unusual summer that the W has ever had. And uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that the media um, really made an effort to uh, work with us and follow our team and follow the league uh, in, a, in an unprecedented situation. So uh, thanks to all of you for supporting the league, following our players. And, you know, we said coming into this, this summer that, um, you know, the players really made it a point to uh, have a voice and use their platform to elevate the things that were most important to them. Uh, outside of basketball, and uh, I think they, they did a great job of being ambassadors for what's right and what's good, both in society and, and of course, on the basketball floor. So, you know, it was a terrific year, and again, thank you for um, just following the league and, and, and making sure that uh, these players had an opportunity to voice things that were extremely important, and also to continue to show the, the incredible talent that exists in the WNBA. You know, as a professional league and, and uh, a women's team sport, you know, that's important that we have the visibility to convey to the public just how accomplished these young women are and just how great they are in terms of all the, the things we value in sports. It, 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 it surpasses um, uh, or it encompasses all of society. And certainly that's important, you know, with respect to a women's sport. So, again, uh, we appreciate that. Um, I also just want to quickly thank um, um, Dr. Allison Barber and our staff back in Indy because, you know, it certainly was not easy to, to uh, market a team that's remote. And uh, I think they did a fantastic job helping us to be visible throughout the state and supporting our players, you know, all even just the little gestures of support um, remotely. We really appreciate it. So, again, I want to thank Allison Barber and and all of the people in the marketing and, and promotions and, and media area uh, for doing that. Uh, as far as our team is concerned, you know, although we fell short of our goal to be in the playoffs, I think we saw some uh, really outstanding things um, come about this season and we improved in a lot of areas uh, that we feel like we can build upon moving forward. Um, it certainly was, an, uh, you know, gratifying to see uh, Julie Aleman achieve all that she did this summer. Um, I was certainly expecting her to have a good year. Uh, my hope was that she would have a good year. Uh, how quickly she adjusted and the quality with which she played consistently, you know, I don't know that anybody could have predicted that, myself included. I was hopeful, but I think Julie exceeded our expectations. And obviously, as a unanimous pick for all rookie team, you know, the other coaches in the league felt the same. So, you know, kudos to Julie for all that she accomplished. You know, uh, as far as um, our team, um, I think we showed the potential that's there in some of our wins. Uh, I felt like with uh, the exception of, you know, a handful of games, we were competitive every single time out. I think we worked through um, improving as a team under trying circumstances at best, you know, never having uh, Erica Wheeler join us, I think was really uh, a tough situation for us. You know, we missed her um, leadership. We missed her play at the point and we missed having a, uh, a quality guard who could play both one and two with experience uh, in that position. And, you know, that was uh, unfortunate, but uh, that coupled with all the injuries, you know, it just seemed like every time we turn around there, there was an injury and that uh, made it difficult to get the kind of consistency that we want. So, I think if there was one thing that uh, this season was was difficult, it was handling all of the curveballs that that came our way and and developing consistency with both within the roster and in terms of our play. So, um, I thought there were some other really bright spots. Certainly, you know, Tierra McCallum had some games where she really really played well, um, rebounded the ball well, uh, showed. Uh, some dimensions to our offensive game that heretofore, you know, I don't think people had seen. And we're going to build on that. Tierra is going to keep getting better. You have to keep reminding yourself that this was only year two for her. So I think there's uh, a big upside there, obviously, and we're excited about that. Um, uh, Kelsey Mitchell started out the year, you know, fantastically. Um, and again, as a young player, has had to learn um, – 
the maturity in her game that's required as a lead two guard in this league. And I think there were some really great uh, times that, that, that Kelsey just was, was terrific. Um, and she learned a lot. So I think she's improving. And again, a br very bright, bright spot for the future. Um, I think Kennedy Burke, this was a, a year for her to come into her own. And I thought that she did a really nice job. And again, a young player who's developing. So uh, all those signs were, were very good. Um, disappointed that some people, you know, uh, didn't get the play they needed and that are also young and, and we're going to count on in the future, namely Lauren Cox, you know, just a frustrating summer for her, but Lauren uh, gave some glimpses of what's the, what the future holds as well. Um, great teammate, um, really, really excited about what the future is going to be with Lauren. Um, Victoria Vivians, you know, I was expecting a big summer for Victoria and unfortunately the knee injury just derailed that in completely, but I know Tori's got a great attitude and a lot of ability and she's going to be another one that down the road um, really is going to help us. So I don't want to overlook anybody and I also don't want to keep just rattle on about things, but um, you know, suffice it to say that, you know, some of our young players got quality minutes improved and there's a lot to build on for the future. We're excited about that. And, um, you know, we look at next year, you know, in a whole new way uh, in the off season, we're going to develop people um, to come back stronger, better, more inspired to have great seasons. So that's kind of the plan for the off season. All right. Thank you, Marianne. Uh, Tamika, let's go ahead. Yes, just trying to, you know, piggyback off of Mary Ann. First off, definitely want to say thank you for uh, your support this season and through the highs and lows, just kind of hanging out just with the fever, but the WNBA as a whole. You know, just the opportunity and the fact that we were able to get down in the WNBA to have a season and to be successfully in the midst of, you know, we got down to the final last, last two teams that will start competing tomorrow. So, um you know, as far as for our team and just this, this roller coaster I've been on in the 65 days and in particular the last couple of months with the season, you know, kind of to where I spoke on as far as the players go. And this was, you, you see the example of what having veteran leadership on your team, what it gets you. And when you look at the last two, two teams standing and you look at the players that are leading those teams, that, those are some that we know, you know, we, you guys have heard me constantly talk about wanting to have a championship caliber team and culture and just the players that we want on our team. And we're building. So we, we're full of young players. And nine of our players are still on rookie contract. And the other three are, you know, Tiff being the, the, the last one, I guess, just finally moving over to the other side. And, you know, Natalie Chama and Candice Dupree being, being our oldest players. And so when you look at just, having such a young team, having to go through all the things that we had to go through, which a lot of teams had to, so don't discount that. But I think a new staff, new, you know, coaches, new players introduced in Julia, you know, kind of uh, what Marianne talked about with Erica Wheeler, Victoria Vivian, Cox, you know, just the injuries that we were dealt with. Um, you know, I am extremely proud of our staff, extremely proud of our players. Uh, and even with that, they know, and we all know that we have to continue to get better. And so, you know, this offseason, we really took a solid look. And in the last couple of weeks, we really, you know, looked at our team and we got, a, you know, quite a few. We made the draft, uh, made the trade in August with uh, getting Jantel Lavender from Chicago. She's another one after this season. So really try out how we continue to attract players that want to be in Indiana and, you know, championship caliber players and how we can continue to get better. So uh, this offseason, we, we got our hands full, but I'm excited about the young players and the talent that we have. I'm excited about, you know, getting into the free agency, looking at our own free agents, and then, of course, looking at some that will be available from other teams and continue to, uh, to piece this puzzle together to, to win a championship. All right. Thank you, Tamika. Thank you, Coach Stanley. Um, we'll go to questions now for the two. Um, again, you can raise your hand or send me a note in the chat and we'll we'll get to everybody here. Uh, Howard Megdahl. Howard, want to start us off? I would love to. Thank you. Thank you all for doing this. And um, 
Good morning, Tamika. Good morning, Marianne. I, I have one for each of you, if I could. Um, Marianne, I, I would love to start with you. Um, I um, remember having a conversation with Mike Tebow when uh, relatively early on in the Mystics process, where he talked about getting to a point where the offense was dominant and he just needs the defense to be top half in order to support it. Uh, obviously, the defensive metrics were, were unkind this year. Uh, the offense has gotten pretty significantly better year over year. I'm wondering where you think both of those need to be for the Fever to get to where they need to go. Uh, thanks, Howard, um, and, and good question. You know, obviously, our main concern is to be a better defensive team than what we showed this year. And I think um, just the realities of all of uh, the situation in the bubble, you know, getting there late, injuries, you know, uh, practice being limited by the fact that you're playing and have one day in between to do everything, including recovery. I'm not making an excuse, but we were not as good defensively as we need to be and in a significant way. And so some of that we can control uh, and we're paying attention to it and working on it. And some of it was out of our control. So we know that um, we need to improve significantly and we will. I have no doubt that we will do that. Um, offensively, I think, you know, there were some bright spots. You know, we, we uh, learned some things about our team that maybe we, we didn't know necessarily. Um, I think we also reinforced the belief in, in some things that we felt, you know, were, were strong points, and we're going to continue to build on that as well. Um, I think, like I said earlier, uh, th thought Tierra came on strong at points in the year. I think Kelsey showed that she's capable to be one of the best scorers in the league. And I think Julie was a real bright spot of what she's capable of doing, and I thought she grew during the course of the season. We didn't get to see where Tori you know, is going to end up, but we know that she's talented. We didn't get to see what Lauren could bring to the table, uh, but we know that she's talented. Um, a late addition that I think was a real bright spot, uh, particularly on offense, was Kamaya Smalls. And I think as she matures and learns, you know, how to play at this level, um, her whole game is it could be extraordinary next season. I mean, she's another uh, bright spot. Um, I think Candace, you know, started the season, you know, playing as well as she's played in her career. And, um, you know, I think we can get her back to that uh, as we approach next year. If, uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of pluses, uh, but the big focus is going to be defensively, we need to be much better. And I would say the starting point, and this is just the starting point, is we need to get our metrics into the middle of the, the league and then work our way up from there. Um, you know, I think everybody understands. You look at the teams that are in the, 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 the finals right now. Seattle and Vegas are two of the best defensive teams in the league. Connecticut is also very good. You know, those teams thrive where they can get stops when they need to. Um, they defend really well consistently throughout a game. And, uh, you know, that's where our, need, our defense needs to be. So, you know, we will get there and we will get there with the, the group that we have and whatever pieces we, uh, we add at this point. But, you know, I, I, I feel like there's a direction that we need to, to go and we understand what it is and we'll get there. I appreciate it, Marianne. And, and just Tamika, if, if I could, the thing you said in your opening statement that uh, struck me was you talked about the players who are leading the teams that are in the finals right now. You know, Asia Wilson is an MVP, obviously, mm -hmm. for the Aces. And uh, Brianna Stewart, uh, a former MVP with Seattle. Uh, the last time uh, Indiana had an extended run of success, they had uh, a player named Tamika Catchings. Uh, <laughs> do you have that player on your roster right now? I think that's hard to say. Um, every team, when you look at every MVP, they're all different, right? all different positions, the way they play is different. So do you have another Tamika catching? That's a hard question to ask because we're all individually and um, different and unique. Do we have a player that can step into that role and be a huge part of what we're trying to build? Yes. 
we have a few players. What's it going to take is, is the question. You know, what uh, when you look at, you know, even going back to the last dance and watching, you know, Michael Jordan and thinking about Kobe and thinking about Diana Taurasi and Maya and Sue and, you know, Bree, Brianna Stewart coming back from her Achilles and having such a phenomenal. When you think about great players and you think about the journey, everybody's journey is different. I think what the players that we have on our team and, and the ones that could step into step up into that role, it's a, it's a commitment to life. It's a dedication. It's a lifestyle. It's something that every single day, you know, I smile when I'm talking about it because every single day you wake up and the first thing you think about is what can I do to be great? What do I need to do in the off season, during the season? What do I need to do? Be, what do I need to do? And then of course, as the season goes along, how do I bring my teammates up to that level to be able to compete at such a high level? That is the commitment that you have to have as, as an MVP. That's the commitment that you have to have as being a leader for your, for your team, whatever team that is. And for us, for the, for the Indiana Fever, we have a couple of great players. We have a lot of great players, but we have a couple of players that I think like top of mind that could step into those roles and be able to use their voice. Julie Alamon, you know, a young player that's still trying to figure out how to be a leader and, and want that that want the responsibility, but really trying to figure out how do I use my voice? You know, Kelsey Mitchell, same thing. Young player has come so far in the last couple of years, or last three years, and next year, you know, it's going to be a big year for her. What's she going to do? How's she going to get to that level? Uh, Tiffany Mitchell, I mean, you can go down the line of players on our team that have the potential to be leaders. When I look at a Candace Dupree and, and her being a leader for our team in the last Year, last few years that she's been with us, Candace has never had to be in a role that she's in right now. And so, you know, we all take for granted that being a leader, people understand what that means and how to do it naturally, but it's, it's a learned skill. It's a, a learned, uh, even for myself, it was something that over the course of the years that I was here, I had to develop every year with a different leadership style and different skill set that I had to, that I had to bring in. So I say all of that to say, yes, we do. No, I don't want anybody to be me. I want them to be better than me. And that's why when you look at these records and records that get broken and, you know, we put so much emphasis, you know, people breaking records, records are made to be broken. And I want, you know, beyond January just passed up the assist record the other day. I mean, how amazing to watch her and watch her blossom as a player into what she is today. I want that for all of our players. And, you know, I, I think that we definitely have great starting point to where we are and, and to continue to, to find the next leader for the Indiana Fever. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Howard. Uh, Akeem Glaspie. Yes, uh, my question's for Tamika. Um, Tamika, I, I know the players had to uh, kind of navigate a lot of challenges while playing in the bubble in terms of the packed schedule and just kind of navigating life in the bubble. But what were some of the challenges that you faced as a general manager, uh, you know, just doing your daily duties uh, in the bubble and how were you able to navigate those? Wow. Akeem, where do I start? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for me is, is I want to be positive and I try to be positive every single day. You know, one thing that with all the uncontrollables that were going on, the one thing that we have control over every day is our attitude and the, the outlook that we have and the perspective that we have with what we're going through. So every day, and you know, I hope Marianne can attest to this every day and Ryan and you know, the other people that we had down in the bubble with us every single day, my main focus as general manager is to walk into the gym and never get too high on a win and never get too down on a loss and realize that this is a process. Now, I can't, can't promise you that I didn't have those days where I wanted to pull my hair out. Um, in games, sitting courtside, I'm thankful for some, some of the masks that we had to wear. But, um, you know, I, I think it's a process. And, you know, one thing that we have continuously talked about within our organization is the three commit, compete, and contribute. And so every day, like my goal is to really, I am committed to what we are building. I'm committed to being the best general manager and committed to being the best ally for our coaching, our coach for Marianne and our coaching staff. And, you know, for everybody that's there trying to do their job. From the player standpoint, you know, my expectation has never changed. And every day, you know, my expectation is I want you to be the best. I want you to be better today than you were yesterday. 
understanding that we have to grow and that we have to teach how to how to operate at such a high level. And, you know, so for me, being a general manager, you know, really trying to set the tone every day, trying to, you know, make sure that while I want to have fun and while I want to be positive, that they also realize that I want to win too. And that, you know, we got to put ourselves in a position to, to be successful. So that was the hardest thing for me. I think I'm, I'm not used to, um, going through some of the struggles that we had to go through. I don't think any of us are, you know, with everything. And this is whether you're in the bubble or outside, what we've had to deal with the last six months or so. So, you know, really just trying to control the things that I could control and find my own little sanity point that uh, could help get us through the days. Uh, Erica Ayala. Thanks, Akeem. Erica, are you there? Uh, Pat Boylan. Hey, Coach. Hey, Tamika. I'm wondering if we could visit something we discussed at the beginning of the season, which was we kind of theorized that one of the potential benefits of the Wubble would be that your young team would get to spend a lot more time together than in a typical season. I'm wondering if you actually experienced that play out that way and if that was a potential benefit for your team in future seasons. Um, well, I feel like it was kind of mixed, you know, when you're 24 seven kind of in the same area, sometimes you just want to kind of be by yourself a little bit, but I think that our team was able to bond pretty well. Um, just over the course of doing, doing business every day. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of free time. There wasn't a whole lot of downtime. It was, you know, go to practice, uh, get ready for a game, go play a game. Uh, come back, grab some food before the, the, the kitchen closed at night and then wake up the next day and you're either recovery and or practice, you know, getting ready for the next one. So it was, it was pretty hectic. And I think a lot of it was about basketball. I think um, if there was one thing that it would have been nice to have just a few more days in between here and they, there for lots of reasons, one of which was just to say, okay, let's go, you know, it would be nice. Let's go to a restaurant, just break bread and get to know each other, you know? And sometimes we, we actually did that bringing food into the bubble a little bit. Um, the, the players hosted a dinner, then we hosted a barbecue, you know, it's just difficult, you know, because there really was so little time uh, to do those normal kind of things, you know, just having a normal experience was, was tough to manage uh, in this situation. So um, I think in spite of all that, our players grew closer to each other. And I think they worked hard to, you know, uh, be good teammates and, and do the things that good teams do. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but, you know, it, it was a challenge for everybody. I mean, you know, one of the, I was reading something, one of our players, I think it was Kamaya said, you know, we're in the bubble and every day you're seeing the team you just played last night and you're seeing the team you're going to play tomorrow and, you know, trying to carve out your space to have, your time with your teammates w was tough. You know, people would hang out at the pool, but so are 11 other teams, you know? So uh, anyway, uh, I yeah, think we tried to did, did a really good job. We don't give them enough credit for what they did. <laughs> yeah, we tried to arrange, like coach said, we tried to arrange some outside things. So we, you know, did the beach excursion and uh, we had one of our local uh, studios, Mimosa and a Masterpiece, they sent us some kits. So we had a painting night, which I think going into it, some of the players were a little skeptical about it, but it ended up being a lot of fun. Just, just being able to see some artistic ability and others not so much. <laughs> but um, just having those opportunities. And like Marianne said, you know, the pool time, um, just trying to have – seeing our players just trying to have their own, you know, cookouts and their own things amongst each other. And, you know, I feel like for every team, they were trying to find the space of being able to have time with just their players and just their teams and staff. And, you know, I think for us, it was really important for me to kind of step aside and let Mary Ann, you know, being a new coach, really have some, some individual time with our Mary Ann and the coaching staff with our players. Um. Let's see here. We'll go to Aaron Barzilai. Thanks. Hey, Coach Stanley. It's good to see you again. Hey, um, my question 
for you is that, you know, it has been a while since you've been a uh, head coach heading into the off season. I'm wondering how you're thinking about it and approaching it this off season uh, and how that compares with some of the things you're anticipating doing to what you've done in some of your recent times and assistants. Um, you know what? That's, that's a good question. It, it's, it's no different than what I experienced, you know, the, the last few years, you know, building a roster. Uh, you know, again, I, I most recently came from Washington and, you know, we had to start from scratch with building that roster and, and the kinds of things you do in the off season, those won't change. I mean, the first thing was to really evaluate our own roster and say, okay, what do we like? What, what do we need to improve upon? You know, uh, who's, who's playing well? What are the, what are the skill sets they need to work on and get better at in the off season? So we come back a better team. So the existing roster, you know, really cl very clear eyed assessment of each and every player and that can, then conveying that to them and working with them to, to make the improvements, whether that's, you know, workouts that, you know, some of it is managing that from afar on their own. Some of it is having players do workouts with coaches or with their personal uh, coaches that they have, you know, this being pro basketball, it's not like college where everybody's on campus and your coaches work with them. You know, you got to have a mix of, coming into your market and working with players and then going and visiting them and then also having them work with um, trained professionals who can help them build and develop the skills necessary. And of course, there's the overseas play. So that factors in staying on top of that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't see any difference in terms of what that looks like, um, um, you know, as opposed to what I've been doing the last few years, you know, maybe just taking the lead role in that. And of course, uh, you know, uh, moving forward, we'll also prepare ourselves for free agency and, uh, you know, going through the rosters of the other teams and, you know, talking about uh, potential prospects, that kind of thing. You know, you just have a preparation that's, that's fully developed in terms of your own team, other players that might be available, looking at uh, contracts and things like that and just uh, preparing to have a, a, a great team that's ready to go and win. I'm going to go to Erica Ayala again. Erica, can hope we can hear you this time. All right. Can you hear me, Ryan? There we oh, go. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, actually, going off of Aaron's question somewhat, uh, for Coach, uh, I would like to ask what you think um, kind of planning for the next season will look like with the players that you have on contract, given that there's a lot of uncertainties. So some of what you experienced in the level is still happening, um, you know, as, as we're here now in our, in our uh, normal daily lives. And I also have a question for Tamika after. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as I was saying, you, you uh, evaluate your roster and then you have, uh, develop a plan with each person, each player, how they're going to improve, how they're going to come back better. Like Tamika was saying, you know, how am I going to be better tomorrow than I was today? You know, that you got to think through that with each player and then develop a plan that can be implemented. And I think following through on the plan is really important. Again, whether they're in the market or whether they're somewhere else. And I, I counsel players all the time when they go overseas to be in a situation where it's competitive where they're going to get the quality of competition that as closely as possible replicates what they're going to do when they're here in the W and also that allows them to improve and do and you know, play in a manner that's going to help them grow and develop. That said, I also understand that the agendas for other teams, you know, overseas are, you know, whatever their agenda is, it's their agenda and players have to be disciplined and have a plan that they can then work their plan for their own personal development. That takes discipline and, and hard work because, you know, what I do for my team in, in Poland, for example, may not be, you know, they, they don't necessarily care too much about what my plan is for, for Indiana, you know, next year. So, you know, it takes a discipline and a maturity and an understanding that, you know, this is good, but that's to a point. And hey, what are the things I need to work on to be better? So each and every person has to, you know, address that and, and handle that. So. Um, it's challenging, you know, it, it's, you know, if you love basketball, you love the process of going through that. And again, I think players like to, uh, once they, uh, determine, okay, I got to get better at this and this. Now, how am I going to do that now? Who's going to help me? And, and what's my time budgeted look like to, to, 
take those steps necessary to come back and improve player. So it's just a normal process of how you go about it. Thank you so much, Coach. And for sure. Tamika, um, I have a question that will take you back perhaps to your days as a player rep for the WMBPA. And I spoke with Terry Jackson, and she recalled that interview that she had with a few players. And I think she said it was Swin Cash that asked, you know, well, what do you want to see in five years? And one of the things that, that Terry recalls saying, or the thing that she recalled saying, is um, that she wants to see the WNBA um, stand on its own two feet, so to speak, and not always be compared to necessarily what's happening in the NBA. Um, I'm wondering if thinking back to that moment and, and the first 90 days of Terry Jackson's role, um, and then flash forward to 2020, I mean, when you look back on um, what it took for the, the PA in particular to get to this point and this particular season um, with really championing social justice, I mean, uh, what are some of your thoughts about that? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, great question, Erica. I'm really, really proud of the union and just what they've been able to do. The Players Association, obviously, Terry Jackson, her leadership, Neko Gumake, her leadership with the players. And, you know, I think when you go back to five years ago and, and sitting in that room, and it really was about, okay, what does the first 90 days look like? And her, her big thing, which she talked about, was really being able to create more opportunity for the lady, for all of us at that point in time, outside of what the WNBA was providing. And, you know, when you look at the journey that Terry has been on, breaking tees, now having t-shirts for every single player and being able to have that, you know, of course, the individual team, we also have a lot of things in, in store for our players, our particular players. But you know, when you look at the social justice platform that the players have been able to really stand on this year, it's been phenomenal. And I think, you know, even going back to the question that was asked earlier, like what, my role down in the wobble and you know being able as the general manager that came um, being able to support our players and what they're fighting what we're all fighting for and and social justice and equality and you know trying to affect a systemic rate change systemic racism yeah i think that terry and neca and you know the the whole ec had done a great job of coming together really kind of planting the stake in and going full forward, full fled forward. Uh, every single point this year when, you know, Terry came down to the wobble for a bit, so got to spend a lot of time with her just kind of talking through, you know, plans and not necessarily plans, but just kind of where we are right now with the WNBA and, you know, and the PA teaming up together, playing this season and for Brianna Taylor and, you know, just everything that the voters right right now, you know, trying to get more people out to vote. And, you know, it's just kind of, it's been great seeing them be so forward thinking and pushing things so far. Uh, I, I don't think that the WNBA and the PA had gotten enough credit for how much further ahead we are than a lot of other organizations and sports organizations. And just, you know, from our player standpoint, how each one of them continue to use their voice and continue to use their platform. You know, of course, Sue Bird, when you look at her and because of the platform that she has, every game being able to have shirts and masks and shoes and, you know, the whole nine yards, our team in particular, looking at, you know, we did a rebound for change and, you know, our, our campaign of being able to get rebounds for the games and, you know, came up with a fun here in Indianapolis, fever for change, where our players will have the opportunity to, through all the money that they've raised this season, through the rebounds, and then of course we have the shoe auction that's going on as well, that will end on October 15th. All the money that they've gotten, they get to decide which organizations here in Indiana they want to support. And also with that, it's the fund that will go every year. So every year our players will have the opportunity to figure out what do we want to fight for this season and be able to look at organizations. So I think as a league, as the PA, being able to start that, and Terry Jackson in particular, her leadership in that role, that kind of flooded to the team, and now individually as team, being able to support our players, support the initiatives that they want to support, and collectively make a difference in our individual community, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> sorry, in our individual community, and then, you know, ultimately through our nation, being able to create change.
Thank you, Erica. Um, I think we got time for two more. Uh, Zachary Diamond. I have a question for Tamika. So Kelsey Mitchell well, was six in the league in scoring in 2020. I was wondering if you could elaborate on her progress uh, in 2020 and what can you expect from her in 2021? Exactly. Thank you for the question. I'm going to piggyback that to Marianne and, and let her talk about Kelsey Mitchell in particular. Go ahead, Thanks, uh, thank you for the question. Um, yeah, I, I think I said from the very beginning that I think Kelsey is an incredibly talented young player. And she did not disappoint in that regard. Um, she came out of the gates playing really, really well. And, you know, there were, there were times when um, there were specific moments in games where she had to learn um, – how to take her game to a, another level. And she did that. I found her to be extremely coachable. I found her to be extremely competitive, uh, hates to lose, and a willingness to, to listen and learn and grow her game. So I was really, really pleased with Kelsey and, and what she's capable of doing. And I, I just keep looking for her to get better and better with each year. And I'm excited about the off season for Kelsey because I think she can add to her game. And, um, you know, um, she's somebody that people don't give her enough credit for the talent that she has all around. They focus on scoring and shooting and she's a much, she's has many more dimensions to her game than just that. And I've said that numerous times, but, you know, I think she began to show that and she really began to flourish this year. And, you know, I, I couldn't be more excited about the future for Kelsey. All right. Last one, last one here. Uh, Akeem, you have another one. Yes, uh, my question is also actually about Kelsey. Um, I actually talked to Kamaya Smalls, and she said that Kelsey was one of the first people to kind of take her under her, her wing and, and show her the, her the ropes and kind of really mentor her as a, you know, as a player coach type. Uh, how much are you guys looking forward to Kelsey taking that next step as a leader? I mean, I know she's not always the most, um, you know, maybe outspoken person, you know, at least to us, but it seems like once she gets to know you, she really opens up. So how much are you guys looking forward to her taking, taking more vocal leadership type role next season? Yeah, that's a great question, Akeem. Um, you know, I think, you know, what Kamaya just described is one of those facets to Kelsey's personality and to all of her ability that, um, you know, unless you know her, maybe you don't see immediately. She's kind of a quiet, keep to herself type of person. But the fact that she reached out immediately and tried to help a newcomer into the roster at a time when, you know, it, it was tough really means a lot. And I think it shows you what she's capable of. You know, leadership doesn't come in the same pretty little package. You know, it's not the most vocal person all the time. And I say that just to, to demonstrate that uh, it, leadership takes a lot of different facets. Some people are more comfortable uh, being more vocal. And it, certainly I would encourage Kelsey to just, you know, be herself and to be the best version of herself that she can be, particularly as it relates to leadership, because she uh, not only has a talent, you know, with the basketball in her hands, but she cares deeply about this team. She cares about how she's playing and being a good teammate. And there's a good example of just what that looks like. So, of course, when your best players are also your best teammates and best leaders, you know, that's what you really truly want. And, um, you know, she's young, but I think she's a good example of someone who can grow into that type of role and certainly being a little more vocal, you know, stepping out there and being, being willing to, you know, be the first one to initiate things, you know, is it, just part of the growth process.